Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Toast to the Men Network with your guy SD Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Hit that like button before we get started. Hit the like button, toasters. Also, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the notification bell so you don't miss when this content drops. Let's go. DJ Academic lashes out at Erica Badu. Wow. He went in. He went in, y'all. And uh, this is something that could have been avoided, that should have been avoided. But we're going to dissect it. We're going to break it down from our take, my take, and see what we can learn from this. Because I don't create content or address uh, public issues or celebrity issues just because. I like to see what we can learn from it because they're people just like us. And since their issues are highlighted, pronounced, put on the front table uh, for the world to see, for the public to see. And our issues are not so much, you know, put out like that on a grand platform. I like to dissect it, break it down, see what we can learn, see what I can learn, because that's what it's all about, learning from each other. So we'll start with what happened recently, and then we'll go back to see how did we get to this point. So. I believe it was yesterday, DJ Academics was on Twitch. He's on Twitch a lot. I think he has a, a contract with them, a business relationship with them. He's on Twitch. Someone mentioned Erica Badu in the comments, and he snapped. Uh, I can't say what he said verbatim, but basically F these chicks, smudge and sage. And, uh, just He just went in, went in on her alleged sex history she can't keep a man dudes that ran up through her she's trying to holler at young dudes um and it came to her like a man too man used the the n-word a lot with her you know that was wild that was weird to me for him to use the n-word with the female um that was that was that was wild but he's young he's from a different generation so i guess that's how they do it and man, this is just, all this is just a manifest, manifestation of what we did or didn't do several decades ago. And now we are reaping, you know, the detriment of what we did or didn't do, you know, as uh, grandparents, parents, citizens. So academics, DJ academics, he represents a vast majority of men in today's society. And the brother went in, man, the brother went in. And let's dive into it. So how did we get to this point? Well, apparently, man, academics felt the way from something that happened five to six years ago. Erica Baidu was on the show. He was once on Everyday Struggle, that show is uh is no longer in existence but he was on that show with joe button and the, the host or the moderator nessa and uh joe button wanted erica badu on she came on she started trolling academics almost immediately start trolling them sizing them up and kind of picking i'd say she was picking at them definitely trolling and she kept saying, you remind me of someone. I can't, I can't put my, my finger on it, but you remind me of someone. And she said, Jerry. Jerry from Tom and Jerry, the cartoon. And then she starts uh, <laughs> singing the music to it, or mimicking the music to it. And his co-host, Nessa and Joe Button laugh, and DJ, Ab DJ Academics didn't laugh. He was like, ah, oh, damn, really? You could tell he was hurt. You know, uh, he was embarrassed. You can tell it cut him deep. And sometimes, man, even if people laugh with you, they could be hurting inside. Now, if you know anything about DJ Academics, you know the brother drinks on the job. He goes live and he's on that henny. And that doesn't help when you're already dealing with issues. Uh, you're already dealing with a lack of emotional intelligence. And uh, 
you mix that liquor with it, and you're harboring stuff, you're bitter about stuff, and somebody just mentions somebody you got a, a beef with or somebody that hurt you, mentions them in the comments, and you just snap, man. You go off. And uh, he went off on SZA. He went off on uh, He really went off on SZA, man. That, that was uh, disrespectful, out of line, overboard. But we're going to focus on, on Baidu. Academics, man, is not a happy man. And he finds his value in money and followers and subscribers. That's where he finds his value. He's not happy. He's not confident. And this is why he snapped. Because he does have issues with his weight. And you really only have an issue with your weight when you feel like you have an issue with your weight. Because there's other big dudes, I feel, that don't suffer from low self-esteem. You know, you got Drusky. Um, you know, you got some other big cats, man. Uh, fat Boy School. Uh, the other Fat Boy, that's his name. Fat Boy SS something, SSE, I think. And he's trimmed down. But it's all about confidence. It's all about how you feel about yourself. And that's going to dictate how you treat others or how you deal with others. He didn't address Erica Badu five to six years ago on that show because he didn't feel good about himself. And he put her on the pedestal. When she started coming at him and, and basically, you know, Sandy got, you know, those, those Jerry Mouse, Jerry Cheeks. And he's, he's, they used to call him Fat Chubby. When she did that, he should have came back. When he saw she was sizing him up, when she was trolling him, he should have started going to his mental roller decks, sizing her up. It's like, man, how can I snap back at this chick? And that's when you know you feel good about yourself, man. When you can play the dozens or snap on a chick with money, a chick with fame, a chick that so-called a baddie. You know, when you can do that, you feel good about yourself. And you don't have to be malicious or mean or derogatory. You don't have to call them out their name. But there's a way to do it. There's charisma to it where, hey, you got to be able to joke on a baddie. You got to be able to joke on a baddie. And you got to be able to laugh at yourself. DJ Academics cannot laugh at himself. And he can't t t t tell a joke on a baddie or somebody with fame, prestige. He can't do it because he doesn't feel good about himself. So this man harbored all that bitterness, all that contention. He harbored it for five to six years. And just the mention of this woman's name took him over. And like I said, the Henny doesn't help. Uh, that's what Tupac said on one of the songs. That the Hennessy don't help. The Hennessy don't help. The passion. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't help. You know, when you're dealing with internal issues, man, it doesn't help. And so I think the brother needs to really uh, detox, needs to sober up, needs to fast, and deal with some internal issues because he's trying to cover up his uh, inadequacies uh, and his, his low self-esteem with money and fame. He's trying to cover it up. And he kept saying, you got to show me. You got to show me y'all about that. You got to show me. I guess he's talking to artists. You got to show me. And let me tell you, man, and I've said this before on different videos, the, the, the universe will show you. It must be obedient to whatever you say. It must be. It doesn't care if you're playing. It can't sense that you're playing around. It can't sense that you just had a bad day. It must be obedient to your words. It must be. So it's just a matter of time before he's shown, uh, it's proven, or he's going to have to show that he's really about that because he's inviting that kind of energy. And it's just a matter of time. And I don't wish that upon him, but this is just a fact of the matter. It's just a matter of time before that energy comes his way. Uh, yeah, and, and you see it throughout his history, if you follow DJ Academics, you see that he has a, a bad, bad, poor relationship with women. And I think it stems from him being a mama's boy, uh, not really having a father, a father figure, strong men in his life. 
And you can tell the way he responds to things, acts, that he didn't have strong men in his life. Another thing is what men must have. We must have somebody we answer to, somebody that's watching us, whether it's mentors, uh, kids, a woman, somebody that respects us and puts us on a pedestal, sees us as Superman, and we're trying to basically live up to that. And maybe we never live up to it, but we have a conscience, and we see people watching us, and we're like, nah, we can't roll like that. I can't roll like that. And I got to straighten it up. I can't. I'm not even going to respond to that because I got people watching me. We need that. We need that. We need people we're watching, looking up to, that's watching down on us. And we need people that's looking up to us. Academics, either he doesn't have that or he doesn't take that responsibility serious. Um, but he definitely needs that. He definitely needs that. The brother don't feel good about himself. He's not at peace. You can tell. Especially, man, when you're drinking like that every day, especially drinking online with no regard, and you know you may spaz out, that's cockiness, that's arrogance, uh, and you will be humble. You will be humble. The universe will humble you. It's just a matter of time. But when it happens, man, I wish grace and mercy upon that brother uh, because I don't know if he's going to be able to take it. He's emotionally unstable, very emotionally unstable. He's been like that uh, probably his entire life. And the alcohol does not help. It doesn't. Um, I know this podcast is called A Toast to the Man. This channel is called A Toast to the Man. And my book is called A Toast to the Man. And so we will toast men. You know, we will celebrate. But not only in the physical realm with, with liquor or, or glasses, but also... Uh, verbally and spiritually, we'll toast man, we'll speak highly of man, we'll encourage man. And so we won't wish the downfall of man. And uh, so I don't wish the downfall on him, but I know the universe is going to respond to him. And I just hope he's prepared to endure. Yeah, because there's no avoiding it. He must endure. But um, throughout his career, he's dealt with women like this in a very aggressive way. So I know he has issues with women, some deep-rooted issues. And every once in a while, he'll go in on men uh, from the internet, you know, like a Meek Mill or something. But I remember the rapper Vic Mensa was on that show, Everyday Struggle, and Vic checked him face-to-face, called him a B, and then said he wants to slap the mess out of him right in his face, and he didn't respond. He did not respond. And uh, I know some of you may say, well, he was at work. It would have been unprofessional. Yeah, yeah, I can dig that if he wasn't so aggressive online. And I tell people, don't do anything or don't say anything to a man online that you wouldn't say to him face to face in a closed off room. And the stuff DJ Academic says online to people, he would not say in a closed room with them. He just wouldn't. He's not, he's not built like that. And most of us not. Most of us just don't want to smoke. I don't want to smoke. If I go there, I'm willing to go there all the way. But I'm not just going to be barking. And most men are like that. We don't, we don't bark because we know where it can go. Um, and that's just an unwritten rule amongst men. But, um, yeah, he was checked face to face. He was checked by Jeezy. Because he had said some, you know, semi-disrespectful things about Jeezy. And Jeezy came on that show, checked him and Joe Button in a respectful, gentleman-like way. The way Jeezy does it usually. Um, he had nothing to say. He had no retort. And so, uh, you know, the brothers are very passive-aggressive. He gets really bold online. And that's a sign of somebody that's not confident and sure of themselves. But another thing, man, he has to learn about women. Never engage in this kind of thing with women. Never get in a back and forth with women, especially online. And never let them see you sweat. Never let them know they got under your skin because that that fuels them. The one thing women want, man, is acknowledgement and attention. And the one thing that will hurt them is if you ignore them. Women hate being ignored. They hate being unacknowledged or dismissed. He hated, and so uh, it's just a part of their makeup. And 
and there's different levels to it. But, and I've said this before, I think all women deal with insecurity in some way, all of them. Um, and I think that's to keep them balanced, keep them humble, because women are the most beautiful species, man, <laughs> on earth, what they are. Um, and they bring out a certain energy in us. And if you let that, and they do let that go to their heads a lot of times, so there must be something to combat that, to balance that. And I think the spirit of insecurity is placed in them to balance them. I mean, I think it even happens in the animal world. Um, I was watching a video of this guy. He had a bunch of roosters, a bunch, man, maybe eight roosters. And somebody in the comments said, man, those roosters are really getting along. They're not even fighting. They're really getting along. And he said, yeah, they're getting along. And it'll be like that until I put a hen in there with them. When I put a hen in there with them, they'll start fighting. Now think about that, man. Think about that. Now a hen, I don't know, a hen may not be able to have this ego or this vanity, knowing that these roosters are, are uh, weakened with her presence. But I know a female, a human female, definitely knows this and recognizes this, and that could blow up their ego. So there must be something placed in them to balance them out. And DJ academics must understand that. And I'm not saying weaponize the fact that you know that a woman is insecure. I'm not saying that. But when she's attacking you, there's just little things you can do to check her, to let her know, hey, stand down. Don't go there. There's little things you can do. I mean, I don't care how bad she is. I don't care how smart she is, how much money she has, how much fame she has. There's some insecurity in her, bro. There is. And the first thing is she wants to be acknowledged. She wants attention. Academics gave by due the attention. What did she do? She flipped it. And now she's selling her incense again called Pussy. I left off the P. They sold out within an hour. All off DJ Academics energy, the attention he gave her. She capitalized off the of it. And so he has to recognize this stuff, man. He has to understand that women are going to get away with things we can't get away with. And we can get away with things they can't get away with. He needs to recognize those differences and then know how to maneuver accordingly to thrive in the society. Uh, not just financially, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally. He needs to learn that. But when he starts getting on their frequency, because he comes at women a lot, but when he starts getting on their frequency, he does himself a disservice. He really does. Uh, it's not manly. It's not becoming of him. And uh, I think he can fix it. But first, he must recognize there's an issue. There's an issue. The flip side is, Erica Baidu could have handled the response differently, you know, but like I said, you know, women have different expectations placed on them from society, if any, and uh, she could have handled that in a different way, her response. It could have been a teaching moment for him and her. She could have came as a, a female elder mentor because she's probably old enough to be his mom. And so think about that. Think about that. You have an older woman antagonizing a younger man. And it's really accepted. It's really accepted among society. But if you flip the roles, you have the older man antagonizing the younger woman, he would be attacked because more is expected of him. He's expected to be mature, 
to take the high road to be a mentor, a teacher. And that's just the way it is. And academics has to realize that, accept that, and capitalize off of that too. Um, that's what it is. Even the way Dr. Umar handled Sukhani was from a teacher, a mentor, a sensei position. And he could have went in, but he came from a teacher position. But that's what's expected of us, that academics man has to grow up, has to get good men around him, and he has to start being responsible for someone. I ain't saying going out there to have kids, but he, started, he needs to start becoming a mentor. He's been in the game for a while. He's relatively young, but he's been in the game for a while. He needs to start mentoring people. When you start doing that, you start watching your behavior too, because you got people looking at you. Uh, so yeah, teach a moment. I hope he learns from it. Toasters, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.